Hi, everybody. This is Pamela Coey, and I'm so excited to have this conversation with Carol Wade, who lives in St. George, Utah. Here's Carol, Carol Wade. So Carol, say hi. Hi. She is a remarkable artist on so many levels. How long have you been an artist? Well, <laughs> forever. Kind of, all, <laughs> kind of all my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I wasn't a painter because painting was very scary to me. Uh, Painting is putting your your you know your live breaststroke is there for everybody to look at, and yeah. that makes you vulnerable. Uh, and what I did was graphic design, so everything I did was printed, and it may have printed you know thousands and thousands and thousands of copies, but it didn't have my finger on it, which was a big difference to me somehow. So you would say that what 20 years, how, how many years have you been a fine artist then? Have you been working on this? Almost 20. And in what mediums have you explored? Um, really just acrylic. I mean, that was, that's what I did for. Okay. Now, uh, one other little thing of those 20 years, how many of those years did you work on the more figurative, realistic work? Uh, 19. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, but I am just completely wrong. <laughs> I would have thought it's the other way around. You spent 19 years as an abstract artist. Okay, I'm I, truly I'm blown away. And I, I just I, I've never seen anybody go from whatever it is you were doing before, <laughs> and nail it. I mean, uh, there are just so many things that make this really remarkable. So at first, I was a little concerned when she said she had a solo exhibition coming up. And you know, her gallery owner um, was expecting her older work and she was coming with this new body of work. And I had a little bit of like inner fear for her, like, uh oh, <laughs> but then we had a special um, what we're calling is call in our pro membership, which stands for focus uh, in Zoom. Right. So we're focusing on a topic and that topic happens to be solo exhibition. So that's how uh, Carol was part of that group. And anyways, when she showed us her exhibition, um, first my jaw probably hit my desk and then it hit the floor because um, there was nothing to worry about. She has somehow managed to nail it in terms of her personal voice, her use of color, her use of design. And that's why we are featuring her because I want you to know about her. I want you to know about her solo exhibition right now. It's happening right now in Salt Lake City. Um, how do you feel now that your show is up? Uh, relieved. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad that it's it's so far been uh, appreciated. And so that's good. Oh. How many months did you work on this show? I think it was only maybe five months. Uh, so pretty pretty quick, actually. That's very quick. Uh, and then about how many pieces are in the show? I think I have 13 up in the gallery and there may be five in the back room. Okay, hoping, great. Hoping to take All place right. when something is sold. Okay. <clears throat> but um, for, for most of your, your 20 years of being a fine artist, you know, painting, um, you talk about, you know, work that's more realistic. So let's take a look at your work and what it used to look like. Okay. 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 So I have not seen your website um, yet of, cause you said you, you did tell me that you hadn't really updated it yet. So um, let's just scroll through your website and you can kind of walk me through um, here's obviously, and your work is just amazing. So um, I guess my first question is, as we look at these works um, there, gorgeous. So what was it that made you think to yourself, I want to become a more of a non-objective artist, because if I painted like this and obviously had, you know, quite a following, there has to be something inside of you that's really urging you to make a change. What was that one thing? Um, I got kind of bored with it. You know, it's, it's, I had a, a method. Uh, I, I knew how to do that work. Um, I, I, usually uh, did paintings from traveling and because of COVID I had my trips canceled. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's why I was kind of looking for something new. Now, were you teaching in this style? 
Uh, no, I did a few workshops. You know, I, every once in a while, someone would ask me to come and talk to a group, a local group or something like that. Okay. Well, um, I bet your gallery um, and the gallery that you're, you're showing in right now, like how long have they had this body, these, this type of work? Um, I think it's probably about eight years. And, and they must have, I'm just going to guess, I don't know this because I have never asked you this. And it's, it's not something that I would normally ask an artist, but because your work is so solid and so appealing on so many levels, have you sold quite a bit of work with this gallery? Um, yeah, I've sold. Yeah, I've, I pretty much supported myself since a couple of years after I started painting. Yeah. So, um, so that gallery and I had a gallery in Park City and, um, okay. and then I did art festivals really in the summers, traveled mm -hmm. to, well, I did one up in your area in Kalispell Art in the Park, did that a few times. Um, Sausalito, I went to Miami, all, all around the country really. Fabulous. Okay, now uh, everybody has had a taste of the way you used to paint for 19 <laughs> years, 19 out of 20 years. And now let's take a look at your show. All right, this is Carol's show right now. And Carol, tell us the title of your show. It's Out on a Skinny Branch. Okay. And uh, you mentioned you had, um, you know, the, uh, talk about the range of sizes you've got here. Well, the, the smallest um, up here is, I think, 20 by 20. Um, and the biggest one is 48 by 72. Okay, great. Just um, look at, I'm just noticing how, how many times your palette changes. You've got so much um, color, um, like you know, it appears to me you love color and you love shape and pattern and things like that, but you're changing your palette. It's not like, and, and the consistency, the cohesion, there's tremendous cohesion here, which is so hard to do for most artists. You've done this in five months <laughs> and this is what blows me away. You saw Carol's work before. It was mostly realistic. Some a realistic figurative, you know, landscapes are gorgeous. And now we have like, this is if you've spent your entire life doing non-objective work. Um, and we're going to, we're going to dive into this more deeply. Um, there's so much to enjoy in every single one of these paintings. And I just want to congratulate you on such a beautiful job. It's not easy to completely change in a way your identity as an artist and have a solo exhibition on top of it. It'd be one thing to do it quietly in the back of your studio with me <laughs> watching. <laughs> Did that make you nervous? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it did. I, I think, uh, I, you know, I had a relationship with this gallery. So um, she was willing, I think, to take a chance. Okay. Good. That's great. Okay. So we're, we're, we're great here. And um, all right. Let's uh, let this is Carol's body of work that's on show right now at the 15th Street Gallery in Salt Lake City, Utah from March 18th to April 7th, 2022. And it's called Out on a Skinny Branch. Carol, tell us about the, the title. That's how I felt. I felt like uh, this branch could break at any time, but um, I'm, I'm willing to go there. I, I'm a risk taker, so. Awesome, uh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's dive into the work here. Okay, so here's a piece. And do you wanna talk about this one, first of all? Well, I have to say that, you know, I, when I started or when I decided to do abstract, uh, Pam, you were one of the first um, resources that I found and your classes. So when I look back at this one, I say, oh, Pam is saying do uh, straight, straight lines and curvilinear geometric and, you know, how does that work? So that was what this one was about. Wow. Simply imperfect. Okay. So what you were doing is kind of playing contrast. You playing with contrast a lot. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And in your color palette, talk about that a little bit. Was that a limited palette or was that like throw anything at it or what did you do? 
Well, I'm not, I think I might've done this before I was concentrating on limited palette, but mm -hmm. I love a uh, compliment, mm -hmm. complementary colors working together. And if you looked at, at my old work, you would see that I, I kind of had a rule that I would paint with two compl two complement sets, okay. but not three. So I could use yellow and purple with red and green, but there would be no blue and no orange. And I found that that was a rule that seemed to work when I was, you know, when I was painting that it would stay cohesive. And, uh, um, but so this, here I am with some red and green, and I don't know if there's any purple in there, but. So let's yeah. chat a bit about that. Two complementaries, um, red and green, uh, say purple and yellow, um, but no blue. Uh, would you try to stay pretty true to those colors? Yeah, no, I, that that's, it's interesting, but that I kind of found that that's what worked. So okay. how about this one? Pie in the sky. Right. So this one, I definitely took advantage of the limited palette and I made the the chart with, you know, starting out and how many different ways could I use these colors? Um, I should have gotten that chart out before I started here. You want to go um, grab it? <laughs> okay, so Ooh, here we are. Isn't that beautiful? So um, this is the chart that I made and it's yellow ochre, cadmium red light and blue green. Oh, beautiful. I'm so glad you did that swatch. And why did you call this pie in the sky? What, how did you come up with titles? Because some, a lot of people are, they really struggle with this, but how? No, I, I definitely struggle with it, but I, I felt that this painting had several pie shaped uh, things in it. The little, the lines up in the upper right, some of them were kind of diagonals and pie shapes. And then that weird shape in the middle was kind of pie shaped. Um, another thing I'd love for you to, to maybe talk with those who follow you and who collect your work. Um, let's, let's just take a peek at this one and this one. What would you like to tell them about why it is that, uh, what can they learn about you from your, from this type of work versus the figurative work? And why do you feel that um, anyone who's collecting your work needs to know how much of your heart and soul is in this work and how do they read it? Because the other work is more readable. Well, I haven't been doing it very long. So, uh, and I, I love my old work too. You know, I don't look at it and say, Oh, I don't like that. What was I, what was I doing? I really, right. I really do like it, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, the color I tried to try to, well, it's important to me. So I kept on using bright colors. Um, um, I would say they should grow with me, my collectors. <laughs> yes, I agree. And, but would you say that you love working in both ways? And that's perfectly acceptable as well. Like, may you fluctuate between non-objective and semi-realistic? I mean, is that something that you think about? Yes. Um, every once in a while, I think, oh, I wonder if I could combine, you know, I wonder yes. if I could combine uh, and do more, say, abstract uh, buildings or abstract uh, landscape. I can see that happening for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're going to be a master at it when that happens. Because <laughs> you've already mastered the, the realism or semi-realism, and now you're showing quite a bit of mastery here. And to me, one of the the most exciting things that an artist can do is combine those two worlds. And I think you're going to be masterful at it. So, I mean, if I were a collector of your work, I would love to, to be a um, part of this new part that you're exploring. It doesn't mean that you're yeah. going to stay here forever. Um, but it, you know, your other work is so strong and nothing takes away from that. This is another very strong body of work. And when you meld the two together, if you decide to do that, that'll be yet another exploration. 
And I think as a collector, I would love to be part of that retrospective, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Part of that journey that you're on because each, each, it doesn't matter what your style is today. What, what I see is just mastery and, and it's extraordinary. And, and I hope that people will see that. And, and I think what's going to happen is your audience is just going to broaden and you're going to be, there are going to be a lot of new collectors um, for you. So how about this one? Uh, this one, um, I think just when I was saying to myself as I was doing this, what don't I have? Pam said that all the time. What don't I have? <laughs> and uh, well, I kept adding things that I didn't have. So, so that, that's what, where this one came from. What were some things you didn't have? Like what, for example? Oh, you know, I added pink. Well, that's something I didn't have, a weird color. That weird little snaky shape thing over there. Yeah. Um, there's some stencil letters uh, that I did with graphite and some kind of cursive letter forms in there somewhere. Nice. You mentioned a background in, in some background in typography or is that part of your graphic design training? Oh yeah, that was, I worked with typography a lot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. How about this one? And, and, you know, do you have any favorites in, in your show? I mean, well, you know, maybe not a favorite, but what about this one? Well, I think when I got to this one was when I started putting some geometric or some of what I'll call my engineering drawing forms. So a little, um, so that's kind of little, a little table down there. And on this one, the values were kind of important. I remember putting my red and green out and I did take a photo and made it black and white because I was trying to, uh, I couldn't see, I couldn't see the difference in those values. Um, and what and are I, these values for pretty close? Yeah, they're close. Um, I wanted them to be close. Right. And your title, bud and leaf. So you're getting, when did that title occur to you? Did it kind of just come at the very end or did it appear? Like I see many, uh, you know, <laughs> like things and leaves and uh, were you kind of thinking of that title as you're painting it or did that come at the end? No, that, that came after. And uh, I think, I think those kind of weird pink shapes reminded they're upside down, but they felt to me like they were peeking out of the soil. And then over in the other pink spot on the left, there's some leaf shapes up there. It's beautiful. It's just lovely. Your, your division of space. Um, it's just, you know, little things that really like the subtlety here. Um, you know, again, what I get when I look at your work is that you really do understand value because in order for, you know, you to have this large, large shape here, um, which really features this because you didn't you didn't put too much high contrast in the green, but given the real estate of this large shape, you didn't want it to have nothing, so you put something very low contrast, but so interesting that this so much uh, references plant material, plant life, you know, and I mean there just isn't a square inch of this painting that isn't fabulous and and interesting and your little black and white areas that really move the eye. You've got a lot of triangulation going on here between this and this and that, the pink, you know, here and here and here. (laughs) I mean, I I could go on and on, but it's just, um, it's very masterful, Carol, congratulations. And how about this one? Um, Well, this one was, this one, I painted over an old painting because that's what I'm doing. You know, I've got a few old paintings that didn't sell. And so I had this one and uh, it was acrylic and I just decided to paint over it. So the, the underpainting is another another painting, which I... Was, it, was your underpainting <laughs> more realistic? Um, yeah, it was. And, you know, I'm, now I can hardly remember which painting it was that I painted over, but this one actually this one came to together more quickly than any than any of the other paintings um and my shapes are less defined really except for the vessel in the bottom there 
Right. Um, mm-hmm. And the mid midtone. This was kind of mostly midtone. One thing I'm really asking in pro, and I don't know if you caught wind of this, um, but I'm asking artists to define like three, if you had to choose three top things that you're, that you're trying to express yourself, like three things about you that you really care about, like what would be the top three things you feel you care about in this painting? Um, hmm. that, that's a good one. Well, I, I cared about somewhat about kind of having a bit of continuity with my other work. And that's why I have that, my little checkerboard at the top, plus to get you, get your eye up there. I see it here, here, yeah. here, you know, sort of essence of it there. I mean, you are repeating that. So, and I know you mentioned in another discussion how the checkerboard is kind of becoming a bit of a, a very um, important thing to you. Right, so that's important. Um, and again, this one has that um, lavender, the lavender and yellow and green and red. This is this was uh, when I was using colors that I was so familiar with. Um, what would you say about mark making? Because as a viewer, I feel this amazing ability to make these marks that feel so free and so loose. And, and then you are fully in control of what you want to keep, what you want to get rid of, but is mark making considered to be part of like your, um, your play or, and is it something you want to be pretty important in your final work? Uh, I think it's real important. So it kind of came in at different layers. It probably came in right at the beginning and then maybe in the middle and in the end, some got covered up. And in the end, I put in some of the, you know, the lighter pencils or some pencil marks, I think, in this one over um, on the top. Right. Top layer. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Carol. This has been um, so amazing. So let's just quickly run through in reverse order these images so that anyone who is thinking about going to your show, um, that they really uh, make it, mark it on their calendar because this show um, doesn't go on uh, beyond April 7th, 2022. So they need to put it on their calendar and do they need to make an appointment to go? No, um, the gallery is open till six, uh, six days a week, maybe five o'clock on Saturday. Okay. Um, but yeah, 10 to six, I think. Awesome. Okay. Well, listen, congratulations. Super congratulations. So proud of you. Okay. Um, just <laughs> Amazed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye now, Carol. Bye, Pam. Bye.